and we're live guys welcome to another episode of good morning crypto only here only on ivan on tech we are of course as usual broadcasting live straight from stockholm sweden and today we're going to talk about bitcoin core because Bitcoin Core is a very interesting implementation, it's the biggest Bitcoin implementation. It is the Bitcoin implementation that people usually talk about when they hear uh, Bitcoin BTC um, cryptocurrency. If, you're if you have a native wallet, you may most probably have a Bitcoin Core wallet. And of course, whenever there is a fork happening, whenever someone disagrees with Bitcoin Core implementation, they say that Bitcoin Core is centralized, they say that Bitcoin Core is controlled by the banks, Bitcoin Core is controlled by this interest that we don't know about. And today I really want to focus on this issue and really focus on who controls Bitcoin Core and how the development process of Bitcoin really works. And Bitcoin Core is not the only uh, Bitcoin repository, not the only implementation of Bitcoin. And uh, of course, you have different Bitcoin versions, so to speak. You have BTC, you have Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin Satoshi's Vision, all, all of them claiming that they're the better one. But <laughs> if you only look at BTC, inside of BTC, there are also different implementations. Bitcoin Core is only one implementation of the Bitcoin protocol, according to to BTC. And so that is number one. Then we're also going to talk about the Lightning Network because you may have seen this video that has become pretty uh, known in the space if, from Decentralized Thought. I think this is his most popular video that the banks bought Bitcoin and then he explains the Lightning Network and how he thinks uh, the Lightning Network is basically controlled by the banks. Uh, I definitely disagree and I want to discuss this issue as well. And then we're going to talk about Facebook hiring blockchain developers. This is the, the next topic. And then we have other news as well. So guys, if you are excited, of course, as usual, smash the like. It's amazing to see all of you here. I see Travis, I see Robin, I see you, Akim, uh, uh, Mikeis. Very welcome, guys. And of course, if you haven't, check out christmas.ivanotech.com, uh, which is our Christmas deal. You get for $1 access to our whole academy for the first month. If you really want to improve your own life or life of someone you know, really get them into the academy because they will learn programming from scratch. They will learn programming on Ethereum, Bit uh, on Ethereum EOS, and NEM and they will learn all about how Bitcoin works under hood, Ethereum works under hood, and all of that good stuff. Re really rare knowledge in a very exciting space, namely the blockchain space. That being said, taking a look at the markets, we have Bitcoin minus uh, 0.2, Ripple minus 0.8, Ethereum minus 1%, nothing really has happened that is significant. Uh, we have Revein at 47%. Is this a pump and dump? We'll see tomorrow if it uh, dumps back again. Factum, 25%. Mobile Go, 18%. Uh, so some good movement here. Dex, minus 10, the biggest loser. Dentacoin, minus 9, one of the biggest losers. Uh, so really nothing significant has happened, except, of course, if you are in this pump in Revein. Uh, so back to the... To, back to the core, back to Bitcoin core topic, and this is also the core of this uh, video. We're going to discuss this article that Jason Lop wrote uh, the other day. You can find it in the description. It is his Medium blog post where he describes how the Bitcoin process works, how the development process works. Because although Bitcoin is open source, Although you can just copy and you can create your own version of Bitcoin, just like Bitcoin Cash have done, just like Bitcoin Satoshi's Vision have done, and so many others. I mean, if you count the amount of forks, it's just insane number. Everyone is free to just copy the code and create your own version of Bitcoin. But if you think about how do we manage a repository, if we want to build a repository together, how do we manage it? Of course, one answer could be that anyone in the world should be able to commit their changes to the Bitcoin Core repository. Anyone in the world should be able to just add anything to the Bitcoin Core repository. Uh, but that, of course, wouldn't work. That It's not possible. You cannot have free-for-all access to the repository because you have malicious players that can uh, insert some kind of malicious code into the repository. You have people that are not knowledgeable enough that will introduce bugs and uh, instability to the system. So although Bitcoin Core is open sourced, not everyone can commit anything to the repository, to the master branch. And so of course, this is where people start to speculate. Hey, 
Bitcoin Core is uh, being captured by some weird interest. Bitcoin Core is being uh, captured by the banks or by this or by that. And uh, we need to understand that Bitcoin Core is not the only implementation in Bitcoin. If you look at the, the article from Jameson, you will find this image where you see that Bitcoin Core is at 96% of all uh, nodes. So basically, if you look at all computers in the Bitcoin network, 96% of them are running uh, Bitcoin Core implementation. But then you have Bitcoin Classic, you have Bitcoin XT, you have uh, BTC1, you, ha you have BTCD, Bitcoin Unlimited. I mean, all of them are also being run on the network, but not at all to the same extent as Bitcoin Core. So, <coughs> sorry guys, so you definitely have a majority uh, for Bitcoin Core. Why is it so? Well, we need to think about the reasons people choose Bitcoin Core and not some other uh, implementation of the protocol. And the reason is that Bitcoin Core is the most respected implementation. When people are talking about Bitcoin, they are most often talking about Bitcoin Core. It's like when people are talking about uh, uh, browsers, they're talking about Google Chrome. And uh, this is kind of the thing that uh, we can compare it to. Back in the days when Netscape was uh, the biggest browser, people didn't say, hey, let's, you know, search on the internet. They said, hey, let's search on Netscape. And just like today, you don't say that, hey, let's search on a search engine. You say, let's search on Google because Google is the biggest search engine. So this is kind of the uh, reality we are in right now with Bitcoin Core, that it is the biggest implementation and everyone is uh, using it. And therefore, you have this uh, very, very uh, unequal division between Bitcoin Core and everyone else. But the reason everyone is using Bitcoin Core is because it is the most respected. If I, as a node operator, let's say I, I'm a miner, uh, I, if I have to choose a, an implementation, I want to choose the one that is most stable, that will get updated the fastest if there is an issue, if there is some kind of bug discovered. I will pick the implementation that most of the other people in the network trust. I will pick the implementation that has the smartest developers that can fix the issues fastest. And therefore, people are picking Bitcoin Core. Because, for example, if you pick some other implementation, let's say BTCD, let's say you pick this one, and something breaks in BTCD, there is some kind of bug they had in BTCD. Well, the question is, how fast will the bug be fixed? How many people are watching the code of BTCD? How many people can um, uh, take a meeting and fix this as soon as possible? Uh, well, probably way, way fewer people than in Bitcoin Core. So to summarize what we've said up until now is that it is a free market. There are many implementations doing the same thing. You can, you can choose to not run Bitcoin Core and still be on the BTC network. You can choose to run some other implementation, but most people choose Bitcoin Core because they're the most reliable, they will fix the issues fastest, they have the biggest community, and so on and so forth. And here is where you see that the position that Bitcoin Core is in is not easy to achieve. And it's very easy to lose because if it is the case that Bitcoin Core starts to misbehave, they have very weird practices, they have some kind of weird process where they maliciously uh, take Bitcoin in the wrong direction and community starts losing trust in Bitcoin Core. It is a very easy thing that can happen. You realize that reputation is very hard to build. It takes years to build a reputation and then it takes a few minutes to ruin it. So. If Bitcoin Core does something that is not okay with the community, that is against what Bitcoin stands for, well, they will, they will quickly lose this position where, when everyone is running Bitcoin Core. Uh, and everyone will just switch to other implementations. So something important to realize is that it is a free market. And the position Bitcoin Core is in is not taken for granted. Because if it is the case that we have a problem, Bitcoin Core really uh, discredits themselves in one way or another, there are tens of other implementations that would like to take their place. So this is something to realize. Although it is not a center of control, as James, as Jameson writes in the beginning, although it is not a central uh, point, it is a focal point. So Bitcoin Core is a focal point. Uh, point for development of the Bitcoin protocol rather than a point of command and control. So as long as they are uh, reputable, as long as they are uh, giving value to the network and people respect them, people will run their implementation. 
you basically have this representative uh, democracy. There are several different implementations, they all want to do the same thing, they all want to develop the Bitcoin protocol, uh, and you're free to choose whatever. Most people choose Bitcoin Core because they are the most trusted. And within Bitcoin Core, you have different uh, people. So some people just write code and then they commit their changes to the, uh, to the repository. And those changes are not accepted automatically because when you develop something as a developer, uh, we need to ensure that uh, when you commit your change, that it is reviewed by other developers, that it is reviewed by smart people that can take a look at your code and see what you have done. And this is something that is called peer review. Uh, whenever you have a piece of code that wants to be part of the protocol, you have other people, experienced people taking a look and verifying that you have uh, done this in a good way, that you have the good code style that we want to achieve in our repository, that you, have, um, uh, that you don't have unnecessary loops, for example, that you are not solving problems in an inefficient way, that you're using the most efficient way to express your mathematical solution to a particular problem. So all of these things. And then you also have uh, test suits. Uh, and this is because when you develop something, you add a change to the protocol, you don't necessarily know what you've changed. You don't necessarily know what kind of bugs you introduce because you might change something right here and then on the other side of the code base, something breaks. And therefore, you have so-called test suits that when you change something before it is accepted, we test it against all other parts in our code base, against all other parts of the software. Because softwares are very complicated organisms, really. And it is impossible for you as a human to change something and automatically know that you're not messing something up somewhere in some other part of the code. So therefore, we have automated tests. And so when all of this passes, you have uh, a few select people that are able to take your code and make it part of the uh, master branch, of the main branch. And those people in Bitcoin Core are the following. It is Vladimir van der Laan, Peter Willy, jo uh, Jonas Schnelli, Marco Falke and Samuel Dobson. So these five people at the moment are able to make changes to the main branch of the code. When new people want to submit their changes, everything is reviewed, all of the tests are being run, and if everything passes, those five people have the power to add your code to the main repository. And these powers have been shifting um, uh, through times. And when you are a maintainer, you have a lot of responsibility. I mean, you have a lot of public uh, responsibility, number one, that people are accusing you of being the censor. You have a lot of, uh, a lot of sh crap you really need to deal with on a daily basis. Different forkers trying to blame you for being a central point and so on and so forth. At the same time, you need to ensure that the code you're merging is legit. So being a maintainer is not an easy thing. And from the beginning, Satoshi was the main maintainer. Satoshi created the repository and he was in, char in charge. And uh, this changed through the, through, through the years. So Satoshi was number one and he gave the keys to Gavin Andreessen. Um, and Gavin Andreessen was in charge for three years, approximately three years. And after Gavin Andreessen, you have uh, Vladimir van der Laan taking the uh, position instead. So when you realize that this position changes and from Satoshi it went to Gavin, from Gavin it went to Vladimir and who knows who will be the uh, lead maintainer in the future, uh, there will be conflicts uh, arising. So one of the conflicts you might have heard is that uh, Gavin Andreessen just lost his access. So if you listen to Roger Ver, for example, he will repeat to you the story about how Satoshi gave keys to Gavin and then uh, Vladimir just took the key keys from Gavin <laughs> and locked Gavin out from the repository. And the reason for doing that is that Gavin was inactive for several years and having a person that is inactive for several years is absolutely a security risk because you have a person that is not contributing to the network, not contributing to the repository and having all of the accesses in the world. Uh, and although Satoshi gave Gavin the permissions, uh, the uh, consensus was that, hey, you know what? Gavin is no longer part of the system, not longer part of this 
development process and therefore his access was uh, uh, taken away from him. And obviously, although we realize that it makes sense to remove access from someone who is not active and just has all of the keys, uh, at the same time you understand that there will be conflicts, there will be people saying, hey, this is censorship, hey, this shouldn't have happened. And I think this process is not perfect, of course. Who knows what kind of personal drama happened behind the uh, curtains, uh, behind the uh, curtains that we can see. And although this is not the perfect process for maintaining an open source development, this is the best process. I mean, honestly, you cannot have just an open repository where everyone can submit everything. You need to have someone in charge who can accept and verify changes. And to solve the corruption issue that might arise, we have different uh, implementations. So different repositories have their own lead maintainer. And if one team messes up, well, you have all of these other teams. So I hope this describes the picture for you. And this is really the first point that I wanted to cover, how the development process is working. Uh, the second point I want to cover is GitHub, because many of you know that Microsoft bought B uh, GitHub a few months back, and this is something that many people are being very upset with, that hey, now Microsoft is controlling Bitcoin, now Microsoft is controlling the development process of Bitcoin. But this is very, very far from the truth, and this is not at all how it works. Uh, first of all, in uh, GitHub, you just have an interface. GitHub is just an interface to the underlying Git system. So really what Bitcoin is using is uh, Git. And uh, Git is this open source software for managing a software project that you have many developers working on the same piece of code. And then we can use Git, which is an open source software not invented by GitHub in order to coordinate and to merge different versions of code together and to track changes and to track versions. So this is something that, that we all need to understand, that GitHub really has no powers. However, GitHub has a power that in that they can basically have access to the repository. They could theoretically change the code in the repository because they have the admin access. And you know, who knows what kind of employees GitHub has. At the end of the day, they have all the code and maybe they can sneak something in. Maybe they can, you know, change a, a line of code without uh, anyone noticing. Well, this is something that is true. This is something that uh, the Bitcoin developers actually are thinking about and therefore you have every commit being signed by the PGP keys of the maintainers. So there are certain keys that uh, are used for signing each commit. And therefore, even if GitHub employee goes rogue and GitHub employee changes something in the Bitcoin core code, it will not uh, it will be seen by every developer. It will, it will be seen by every developer on the uh, network because you need to run a script and you see that some commit is not signed by a known PGP key. So this is another uh, attack surface that is being covered by, uh, by the system of encryption with PGP key that you can verify exactly who signed which commit. Uh, something else that is important is that uh, if something happens to... Uh, to GitHub, you always have other uh, versions of uh, version control. So GitHub is just one platform. There's also GitLab. There's also uh, Bitbucket. There are so many other things you can do in order to manage your software. And so GitHub is in no way a central point of failure in uh, Bitcoin development. And you can see how this has developed that in early 2009, the entire source code of Bitcoin was simply a RAR file and it was hosted on SourceForge. So from the beginning, Satoshi just did the RAR file and put it on, <laughs> on SourceForge. And the whole development was that developers just emailed uh, code patches with Satoshi. So there was no uh, GitHub, there was no Git, they just emailed. And this is the worst way you can do. <laughs> I mean, this is the worst way you can develop a software on. And therefore, very quickly, uh, Sirius in 2009 created a subversion repository. So you remember how I said that Git is this open source uh, uh, software that people use in order to manage uh, code development. Well, you also have subversion. So Git and subversion are basically two different things that are doing the same thing, that are intended for the same purpose, namely managing source code development. So in 2009, uh, Bitcoin was a, on a subversion repository. 
And then in 2011, uh, we uh, we migrated to GitHub and started using G Git uh, and GitHub as an interface. And then Bitcoin was renamed to Bitcoin Core. So both the names and the hosting platform of the repository change uh, change through history and will most probably change in the future as well so it is not just a static platform that we will be on github forever and we have no other choice it is a temporary platform that is working for the moment if something doesn't work we switch if github if github employees try to change something and we discover it which we will we will discover it in a second's notice uh, because we run our scripts that verify the signatures and if a commit is uh, entering the repository with a bad signature it will not pass it will be seen by everyone and so uh, therefore, if it happens, we just switch to another platform. Now, the th second thing I want to cover, and by the way, Mikey, thanks for the super chat, thanks for the donation, but uh, I will focus on my explanation. But, but thank you, thank you. I, of course, see all of the donations, but I don't want to interrupt and talk about something else. I think super chat is best for Q&A. When we have Q&A, uh, then you can ask questions with super chat. But when I do normal explanations, I don't want to interrupt. And you're, of course, free to give donations, but <laughs> please do not expect an answer. Do not expect an answer when we are uh, in the middle of a topic. Now, the second thing I want to discuss is the Lightning Network, because you might have heard this uh, uh, video and you might have heard people running around on the internet saying how banks bought Bitcoin. And uh, part in particular, they're talking about this video that describes the Lightning Network and how Lightning Network is centralized. And really, this is your forker forker starter kit if you want to become a forker you discredit bitcoin core you say hey you know it's all centralized they are very very censorship uh, they like censorship and all of that and then you also discredit the lightning network this is what all of the forks in the space do so if you would like to become a forker here is your starter kit but what they uh, what they talk about in this video about lightning is the fact that on Lightning, you will have these hubs. So th this is what they are demonstrating. That, hey, this is Lightning Network, and then you have hubs. And they automatically call the hubs banks. And we need to, first of all, realize that Lightning Network is a layer 2 solution. Whenever you change something on layer 2, it doesn't affect layer 1. And I think this is the most common misconception people have, that they think that Lightning changes Bitcoin forever. They're like, hey, Ivan, have you heard about Lightning? Uh, banks have bought Bitcoin. Now with Lightning, everything is centralized. And the first misconception is that, no, we have the base protocol that is Bitcoin. And then everyone is free to build whatever they want on top of the base protocol. And so Lightning is such a layer two solution that everyone is free to build. The same can be built on uh, Bitcoin Cash as well. I mean, you could theoretically build Lightning on Bitcoin Cash. Um, now, without SegWit, it is harder because you, you do have transaction malleability, but it is not impossible. You can still solve the issues. And so by saying that Lightning is evil and therefore we're going to fork, it doesn't make sense because Lightning can be implemented on almost any, uh, any Bitcoin-like fork. And the funny thing is that now Bitcoin Cash also want to have Lightning. I mean, you listen to Jihan, now they also want to have Lightning. So uh, this is the first thing we need to understand, that Lightning is a layer 2 solution, anyone can build it, and therefore you cannot say that it is the fault of the main developers that Lightning is being constructed. And if something breaks in a layer 2 solution, it doesn't at all affect layer 1. So this is number one. Number two, is Lightning really centralized if we're talking about these uh, hubs that will emerge? And, you know, if you look at the Lightning topology today, you do see nodes that have more connections than other nodes. And you do see nodes that are more popular, so to speak, than other nodes. And so it, it is so easy to, to point to that and say, hey, you know, this is a hub. This is a bank, basically, uh, having all of this control over the network. But it is a very, very bad comparison. I mean, it has nothing to do with uh, banks at all. It is all voluntarily. If you do not like a node, you don't agree with how nodes operate, you do not think that nodes is a great idea, uh, you can just connect to another node. Uh, and also you need to realize that it's all about microtransactions. So when people are talking about that Lightning will not be able to have... Um, 
transactions that are you know purchasing of a house that are purchasing of a business well it is true it's for micro transactions you can think of lightning as your credit card you do your everyday shopping with lightning and then if you want to do something more of uh, uh, more significance then you use the base layer so very different uh, use cases for the base layer and for lightning network and once again, if it is the fact that something breaks in Lightning, that the game theoretic model of Lightning is broken for some reason, that you do have, you know, hubs, so to speak, Bitcoin is still there. Then you can always do a normal Bitcoin transaction. And I mean, I don't even agree with the fact that it is centralized because as I told you, here is his picture that he, he's drawing all of these uh, centralized nodes, which do exist on the Lightning network. If you look at the Lightning topology, there are nodes that are more popular than others and it is just in uh, in the nature of markets i mean someone will be more popular than others someone will have more connections than others uh, and it's all about voluntarily connecting to a node if you don't like this particular node i mean there will be hundreds of other nodes trying to take the place of that uh, popular node so being a popular node makes you a lot of money of course because you can route a lot of transactions and therefore it is a desirable place to be in and no one will jeopardize their place in the ecosystem. So guys, I hope you learned a lot. We've already been speaking for 25 minutes and I hope you are understanding the development process of Bitcoin more and you understand how Lightning Network operates a bit more, that it is completely separated from the base layer and Lightning Network can be implemented on Bitcoin Cash and now they actually want Lightning Network, which is very strange according to me. <laughs> they were so against it. They were so uh, against the whole concept of Layer 2. Now they actually want it. Uh, Bitcoin Satoshi's vision don't want Lightning Network, but could you build it on top of Bitcoin SV? Probably. You could probably build it as well. Uh, and therefore, to equate a Layer 2 solution to the base protocol is very, very wrong. Uh, so we're going to see how this develops. Leave your likes in uh, in the like section as usual if you uh, if you learn something and uh, see you all tomorrow. I see a question from Mike. Uh, updates about resistance. Yeah, we will have updates soon. We ha will have updates soon. Uh, we have you Akim Shilling SV in the comment section as usual. Shout out to you Akim in Australia. Crypto positive. Awesome. 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 Mike uh, Hopkins, uh, Emil, guys, thank you so much for watching and write in the comment section if you agree or disagree. I'll see you all tomorrow. Have a great day and goodbye, guys. Goodbye, goodbye.